Mr. Merkich here and today I'm going to show you how to implement a very basic version of multi-threading. Now this is a particularly important thing to have in your programs especially if you need to do a lot of things at one time. Uh, it significant, significantly speeds up uh, the times on, in which it can do things and also uh, it's much more efficient as well. Uh, now this is just a basic version as I said and it's one of a few versions or methods to add multi-threading in and we're going to be using parallels for each function and what we're going to do is go into our code here and create a new list um, and the list is going to contain everything that we want to check in the for each function now in this example I'm going to add a list uh, I'll call it dim urls as a new list of a string and then what we'll do is when the forms loaded we'll just add a few things in so we'll say urls dot add uh, oh did I call it url urls dot add wherever that is and then we'll add in a few so first of all we'll just go and do https do google dot com and actually we'll put www dot as well and then what we'll do is we'll copy this a few times and then we'll go ahead and do Bing Yahoo uh, we'll do Facebook and we'll also do Twitter as a final one so let's say we have a list now now you can use this for whatever you wish <coughs> your list could contain whatever you want and then you'll decide whatever you want to do with it so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and add a button to start off the process and what we could also do is add in maybe a list box to show the uh, output just like that so we'll, we'll make a simple little program here uh, we'll make the button and we'll call it start so there we go what we'll do is when we press this button and I'm trying to think of a way to demonstrate the speed of this so I'll show you beforehand how slow it could be uh, and how fast it can be. Now the thing is, because we only we're not doing much, there's not a very big difference in the example um, because uh, multi-threading is a lot more efficient over a widespread number of uh, things. So let's say you got a thousand here instead of five, you'll see the uh, difference much more uh, the more there is and things like that. So. First of all, I'll just show you here. Um, what we'll do is we'll do something basic. We'll just say using w client uh, w client as a new system dot net dot web client. And what we'll do is we'll say for each URL in URLs, uh, we'll display a message box message box dot show, and then we'll just say w client dot download string and we'll download the URL string and print that to a message box. So we should see five message boxes with the source code of every index page. And we'll see how long it takes um, because obviously this is going to be running on one thread. So we'll press start, see how long it takes. So there's the first one. <coughs> we'll wait for the second one, there's that. There's the third. And now there's two more left, so we've got Facebook and Twitter left and you can see how long the Facebook one's taking um, maybe that's just some sort of security on their end but you, you can see that it wasn't very quick but now what we can do is if we take this code away um, and but what we'll do instead is you multi-threading so what we can use is something called parallel dot for each and there's also four we'll use for each and then what we'll do is we'll give it the our list of URLs and we'll make a new sub inside here we'll call it URL it's basically like the for each so now for each every for each URL in the URLs and what we want to do is add something or well, first of all no we don't want to do that we'll just we'll just we'll keep with the message box using w client as new system dot web client we'll do the same thing again 
uh, wclient.download string url and now you won't see much of a difference because what we're going to do first is we're going to say thread in dot thread pool dot set minimum threads uh, thread pool sorry dot set min threads and we'll set it to five just because we got five urls and we'll do we'll do each one on its own separate thread uh, here you can set the minimum threads to whatever you want and also uh, parallel has a parallel options if I'm not mistaken uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to access it here parallel options no we can't access it there but you can edit a few options if you really want to and pass it to the for each uh, statement and that's just things like that but you can just set the minimum threads here as well uh, not a problem so what we'll do is we'll launch that up and we should see like multiple message boxes coming at the same time because it's not one thread anymore so we'll click it and you see that was the third one before but it come up first because it was shorter and you see they're all popping up at the same time whereas on the other version on one thread it can only display like one at a time usually until you press ok the next one will show and that's because they're running uh, five different threads and of course um, a way to show you we could add stuff to the list box because I want to show you that because you would run into a problem uh, because everything's running on a different thread and you want let's say you wanted to add something to the list box it wouldn't allow you uh, what I mean by that is I'll try and show you the best I can we'll say list box one dot items dot add and if we try to add that content into the list box we should get an error and we'll, we'll give that a try and you can see uh, because it's a cross thread operation um, and that's what I'm trying to explain to you and I thought I'd show you because people would run into the problem so what we'll do is we'll make a different function and we'll just call it private sub um, add a line let's say and then we'll say line as a string and inside here we need to do is say list box uh, one dot begin invoke and then all we can say here is inside there sub and we say list box uh, one dot items dot add and we'll just add the line that we'll pass to the function so now instead of adding directly to the list box here we'll just type the function name add line and now we can give that a shot and we should be good we press start and it should add the contents to each line uh, but of course it's very large it's a very large piece of text so you probably can't even see it there um, but it is there as you can see one two three four five for the five URLs and um, so a way I could try and show you this a little bit better actually is if we ping these URLs and add them to it so uh, for each URL all we'll go ahead and do is we'll say add a line and we're going to use a kind of uh, like an if function but it's going to have two outcomes so we'll say double i if and then we'll say if my.computer.network.ping we'll ping the URL and if it's equal to true then we know that the website is online so the first thing we can do is say URL plus is online and then for if it isn't true we can say URL plus is offline just like that um, so we can have and basically sort of an if statement if within the add line and if it's true it's online if it isn't it's offline uh, and actually to do this we just want to remove the HTTPS on all of these links because the ping uh, starts acting funny if that is there so we'll just remove that and leave it at the www dot and give that a launch uh, so we'll hit start and you can see instantly as soon as I click the button all five were online now you could argue that you could use a for each statement to check all five of them and it would be equally as fast if not just a tiny bit slower but that's just because you're doing five if you'll see the big difference if you had a large list of these um, like I said uh, what we can do as well let's say just down here you can say add line and you can say task completed 
and this is like if if you were to have a program with all of this implemented you just want to let them know or, or tell you can tell your program to reset and that's completed and we'll just do it again press start and you see task completed at the end just like that now this is just a small example of a, say a multi-threaded pinger which is not really useful at all but let's say you had a list here of accounts and you wanted to check them uh, you'd have a large list of maybe a combo list or something and this function here would be check and then you'll check the combo uh, inside of it and there you have, you have a multi-threaded checker uh, and you can check things uh, really fast so there you go very very basic probably not the best way at all um, but if you're a beginner and you just want to make something a little bit more faster um, and get into the swing of multi-threading this is a good way to start and improve your programs a little bit so I hope it did help you if it did please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time